Well, good evening to your uh, discerning viewers. I must say that this is, we've got into a situation where uh, there's the option. Uh, we cannot get away from debt restructuring. Uh, if we want to sign on to the IMF program, there's no way out, it's inevitable. Uh, so we ought to look at this carefully as we sign on to this uh, program. It's a requirement. And if you saw the recent ratings by Fitch, uh, we are in the last but one category, WCA. The last, the junk status, the last one actually, is where we default. And we don't want to default. That is why a restructuring, uh, a controlled or systematic restructuring, which Fitch says it, it gives us a stable outlook, is the option to go. Certainly, this has implications. There will be pain. Uh, there will be implications for uh, investors, for the citizenry, uh, because as much as we say um, there's no haircut on bonds, the principal, um, we are trading that for long-term uh, bonds, other bonds that will attract zero interest rates, and then 5%, and then 10%. What it means is that if you're a financial institution and you have taken fixed deposits from the general public and invested in government bonds, you are likely to pay, you are going to pay interest if it's 15 or 20% to whoever is holding your fixed deposit. Yet your return from government will be zero for 2023. This is going to affect liquidity in the banking system. It is also going to affect livelihood because there are some mutual fund holders, individuals who have invested in mutual funds who are already suffering from uh, uh, some, I won't call it haircuts, but they have what they term mark to market value. So as they price, they give you a fair price, a fair value, um, that is the price at which if they sell today, they realize, you realize the value is going down and therefore people are suffering or they are suffering some of this. I, I, I appreciate already. that, Prof. I appreciate that, Prof. And I'm going to come back to that. But I, I'll, I'll, I'll require you, first of all, if uh, you don't mind, to try and answer my first question for me, which is how consultative do you find this approach, especially seeing the kind of resistance that labor unions are, are giving to this approach? Well, there's been some consultation. I, I know that some of the banks, uh, the CEOs of banks were consulted at some point, you know, but they, the extent to which the consultation happened, uh, I, I, I cannot uh, say to that. But I think there was some consultation. That one, I know for sure that there's so, been some so, consultation. So if there was, why are we not seeing an indexation to inflation and to exchange rate depreciation? Because 100 cities today is not the same as 100 cities in 2024, 2025, or 2026. I mean, if you're going to revise the coupon rates downwards and you're going to extend the maturation of this uh, investment, certainly you need to consider inflation and consider exchange rate depreciation. That is some form of a haircut. And people are not going to realize the real value of their money. That is very, very much true. But if you want to look at that, then there's nothing like uh, restructuring. There's, there's no haircut. There's no restructuring. Because you want to reduce your debt level so you can qualify for an IMF program. But if we want to uh, take and trend positions, we want to stick to our original position, we want to ensure that we get the true value of our investments, then that that uh, program will not come on. So, so, so perhaps started, maybe, so perhaps exercise. maybe, Prof, perhaps maybe the government has not been exactly true to its people. Why do you say, for instance, that there's not going to be any haircuts on the principal? Because it is that same principal that's going to lose its real value in the next five to ten years. Yeah, technically, the government is right. If you see haircut on your principal, is the amount you invested, that's your principal. You know, but the value is going, is going to lose value over the years. But in terms of haircut, what we mean by a haircut is your principal value, assuming you put it 100 CDs, and then there's that trading, uh, that exchange, that added exchange happens now, you might get 90 or 80, but that is not going to happen. But then you're right, in the long term, long to short to medium term, the value of that investment is going to go down. That is why when I started, I said, um, Banks that have even bought fixed deposits and they have used the money to buy government bonds are going to lose quite a lot of money. And that is going to affect their liquidity. 
Uh, my final question to you will be how the layman on the streets, the pensioner, is supposed to consume all this information. But before that question, though, um, the government has said that our debt service ratio is way about, above 70 percent, a reason why we're deciding to undergo this debt restructuring. Now, the government has also said that our debt to GDP ratio, as it currently stands, when you add the other debts being owed by, you know, state entities, it is in excess of 100 uh, percent. Now, government is hoping that it would bring this debt to GDP ratio to about 55 percent and also to uh, bring the debt service ratio to a prudential level of, uh, let's say, 11 percent or 18 percent, if you like. Now, if the finance minister is today telling us that they are hoping to, in 2025, bring the debt, um, uh, the debt to GDP to 55 percent, when Mr. Akes, who is a director of the finance ministry, has said that even if we are supposed to record a fiscal deficit in the next three years of 0 percent, we will not reach that 55 percent target, and that it will only bring it down to about 85 percent. Is the finance minister been, been correct with us? Well, I, I haven't heard Mr. Ake's view, um, and I haven't seen the numbers that, that led to the projection that will get to 85% or 55%. But the key thing is that once we have this debt restructuring, where there is a freeze on interest payments um, and, and so on and so forth, then this is likely to lead to a reduction in your debt GDP uh, ratio. And that's something that is inevitable. We, we ought to look at it carefully. But I must say that I wish government had been a bit more upfront with investors, with Ghanaians. It took too long for them to come out with this. And even with this one, people are still not sure what the details, the fine details are. And that creates a lot of speculation, uncertainty, creates a lot of noise. And finance or money doesn't like noise. I mean, once people feed on speculations, it leads to unintended outcomes. And, and I think this should be taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. We have the National Commission for Civic Education. This is their job. They should take this up and disseminate this information in the local languages, clear technical terms for the local investors, for you and I, for the ordinary Ghanaian, to understand and appreciate what is happening. Otherwise, we might not get the intended outcome. People will just rush the banks and take out their monies, and mm. it will not augur well for us. Mm. I'm really hard-pressed for time, but uh, my producers, forgive me. I've got to ask this final question. Uh, you made a very significant point about the banks and how they're likely to be affected. Of course, banks who, have hold, who are holding depositors' money and have got to invest in bonds, who are being told that from next year they're going to have a 0% uh, interest rate. But they've got to pay their uh, investors and, and customers. Do you foresee a situation, because you know, we know about banks and their capital, uh, capital adequacy ratio, the issue of liquidity. Do you foresee a situation where most banks will from next year begin to record low profits? That, that is very likely to happen unless the banks grow the non-interest income. You know, banks get money from interest income, non-interest income, uh, like uh, LCs and other areas. So if, if they grow that, that um, proportion or component, then they may be able to record some positive profits. Otherwise, their profit margins are likely to be affected because if you have to pay on the deposits you mobilize, yet you don't get interest on this money that you have invested. Certainly, your cost is going to drive up and your profit is going to reduce. Professor Korte, it's always a pleasure talking.